Welcome to the first lesson in the section on hydraulic valves and control components. This is the 52nd lesson in the course and this will be an introduction lesson to the world of hydraulic valves and hydraulic systems control. First of all, what are control components? Control components are parts of the system or machine over which man can control the work parameters of the system. So we assign some input values, they can be on or off or we can choose a certain direction or amount of fluid flow and then the control components realize those input values to output values or parameters if you will that we wanted to change in the system. Here we can see a directional control valve that is operated by hand, we can see the lever so we input the command using our hand and the directional control valve gives the direction to the fluid flow. This directional control valve has three positions and the middle one is the off position. So if you push this lever to the right, you can activate the first position giving direction to the fluid flow. When talking about controlling the hydraulic system, what can we really control? What are the parameters and the variables that can be altered in order to change something at the output? Well, first of all, the simplest thing we can do to a system is just turn it on or off. We achieve this with turning on the electric motor that powers our pump, for example, or by using a shutoff valve which disables the fluid flow to the hydraulic cylinder, stopping the cylinder's function. Number two, we can control the direction of the work fluid with the previously mentioned directional control valves. If we want cylinder extrusion, we have to make sure that we direct the fluid to the front of the piston and if we want cylinder retraction, we have to direct the fluid to the back of the piston, like we saw in one of the previous, previous lessons. This is exactly what directional control valves do. They enable us to direct the fluid flow. And number three would be controlling the pressure and the flow of the work fluid. Here we can see a pressure relief valve and here we can see the flow control valve. Okay, we know what we can change, but what does that change of those parameters do for us in the output sense? Well, for example, changing the direction of fluid flow will change the direction of the force that is exerted or torque if we're talking about rotational hydraulic motors. Changing the pressure of the fluid, for example, will affect the magnitude of the force exerted. So if we want to change the force, we have to change the pressure. Remember the relationship between force and pressure. Pressure is equal to force divided by area. And of course, the amount of fluid flow will again directly influence the speed of the work element on the output. Remember the equations for speed, they were always influenced by the flow of the fluid. Let's look up some examples for each parameter. First, the direction of fluid flow control. So the direction of the fluid flow is controlled by the so-called directional control valves or short DCVs. This right here is the schematic for a directional control valve and it is pretty intuitive with the arrows pointing at the direction of the fluid flow. Line A is the pressurized line, so pressurized fluid is coming to, from line A and line B is the return line that goes back to the hydraulic reservoir or hydraulic tank. In this position, the pressurized fluid is getting to the front of the piston, it is filling up right here and it is pushing the piston and the piston rod to the right side, in other words extruding the hydraulic cylinder. Now what happens if we push this hydraulic valve, this directional control valve to the left side, changing this position on number one, this square, changing it to number two, this square. Okay, so Let's see what happens. Well, the pressurized fluid now goes to the back of the piston, pushing the piston and the piston rod to the left side, in other words, retracting the cylinder. Of course, the other side fluid 
goes back to the tank through line B. Now you can see why the direction of the fluid flow directly influences the direction of the force that is exerted or torque if we're talking about rotational hydraulic motors. What about the pressure of the work fluid? What happens when we control the pressure of the work fluid? Well, first of all, remember the relation between pressure and force. So pressure is equal force divided by area. You can see that by changing the pressure, we directly change the force. So the pressure of the work fluid and therefore the force is controlled with the pressure valves. Here we can see something that's called the pressure relief valve, which basically limits the pressure to a certain amount. When our system reaches a certain amount of pressure, it opens up releasing the excess fluid to the tank. Now here we have a pressure relief valve system which limits the force of the hydraulic cylinder extrusion. So the force right here will be limited. When it comes to flow of the work fluid, the output parameter that we change by changing the flow is the speed of the output work elements. So the speed is controlled with the flow control valves. Here we can see an example of a flow control valve system. At first we are supplying 20 liters per minute to the flow control valve. This flow control valve is limiting the flow to 15 liters per minute and it is supplying 15 liters per minute to this hydraulic motor. Now this hydraulic motor is giving us a certain speed, a certain RPM at the output shaft. And that speed, as we saw from the lesson in hydraulic motor parameters, when we talked about flow, we said that RPMs are equal to 60 times the average flow of the motor. In other words, this is the real average flow that is supplied to the motor input minus the flow losses divided by the specific volume of the motor. So right here you can see that by changing the flow you directly change the RPMs or the speed of the output shaft. So when we set this flow control valve to not limit any flow, in other words it lets all of the 20 liters per minute pass, we increase the flow which is in the numerator and we increase the RPMs on the output shaft. So the increase in flow will result in the increase of the speed of the output shaft of the hydraulic motor. This is the same for hydraulic cylinders. Remember when we talked in the hydraulic cylinder section about flow and the speed of extrusion and retraction. In terms of how these control components can be controlled or operated or activated, we can divide them into a couple of different groups. First, they can be activated manually by hand this is the simplest form and here we can see a directional control valve with a lever which we pull and activate by hand. They can be activated mechanically like we can see here in this picture number two by using rollers as we can see here and also by using springs. Number three we can activate them electrically by using solenoids and solenoid activated valves are used a lot in hydraulics. Pneumatically, this is more the case with pneumatic systems, hydraulically, when we use fluid to activate the valves, as we can see here, so we have fluid coming in to activate the valves and also combined, this is also a combined version, why, we're going to see it in a minute. But before we continue to the next slide, I just have to tell you that pneumatically and hydraulically activated valves are also called pilot activated. So we use the fluid from the system to activate the valve. So why is this a combined actuation? Well, first of all, we have springs, which are mechanical actuators, and we have hydraulic actuating. So if they have two or more types of actuation, those are called combined actuation valves. Here we can again see the types of actuation. Push button lever are all manual actuations. Solenoid 
is the electrical actuation, mechanical we can see spring, roller lever which we saw in the picture, foot pedal and here we have the pilot operated actuations that can be either pneumatic or hydraulic. When we give a certain input information to the control component that we saw on the, the second slide, we give out a signal. No matter the type of actuation, a signal is sent to the control component. Now that signal can be either digital, discrete or analog. When we talk about discrete signals, they are either on or off, they're either in a one state or in a zero state. And those are called binary digital signals, like we can see right here. If we take a look at an analog signal right here or right here, we can see that they are signals that are continuous. In other words, there is an infinite amount of data between any two points on this function. So we can think of analog signals as continuous signals and digital signals as discontinuous signals. An analog signal is for example given to the flow control valve, for example how much flow can it allow, and a digital signal for example is given to the shutoff valve to shut off the flow or to allow the flow. So we have either shutting off zero or we have allowing the fluid flow one. When it comes to the types of control valves in hydraulic systems, there are five rough groups. First we have directional control valves, the DCVs that we talked about. We have one-way valves that let fluid flow in just one direction. We have shutoff valves that allow us to cut off the fluid flow in the circuit. We have pressure valves that are in charge of regulating the pressure in the system and we have flow control valves which are used to regulate the flow of the work fluid in the circuit. In this section we will be talking in depth about every type of control valve. This is it for the introduction lesson. Thank you for listening and for staying focused and see you in the next lesson in which we will talk about directional control valves.